Hello and welcome to this edition of Len and Kathy. We are so glad that you've come to this television address to watch a program that will help you in your life. We are so glad that you've taken the time out of your schedule to DVR and to record this program like others have told us uh, on our email platforms and by mail and, and phone call and all of that to uh, later take apart, uh, take apart the, the teaching that's been given and, and take notes. If you can do it live when we're doing the program, it would be great to grab your Bible or grab you a notebook or a legal pad and a pen or pencil and just mark down these things that you can study them and study them and study them. And if you don't record the program, you can go back to the TCT archives found on tct.tv and there'll be a lot of the Len and Kathy programs there. Uh, for you to study and be a part of. Amen. Kathy, we are having a great time on the Red Letter Highway. What is the Red Letter Highway? It's all the wonderful promises, Lynn, of Jesus. It's the radical, just inspiring <laughs> promises that say basically nothing's impossible. And so we're building faith in people, Lynn, by going over them today and letting people know that Jesus said, whosoever can have whatsoever. Well, now, wait a minute. That's wait a minute. my favorite saying. That is radical. I mean, Jesus really upset the, the religious apple cart, he did, did he not? I mean, he turned it upside down. He still is. <laughs> and still is. He's, he's, he's as radical as ever. But the great thing is we need this kind of, of radical in-your-face truth to get us back, get our molecules flying in formation again, spiritually, and to get us back uh, understanding what God's plan for our lives uh, really is. And so that's what we love about the red letters in your Bible. These are things that are recorded in red ink for emphasis that Jesus said so we can put even more focus on them and utilize them for our life. And you said we, we need them. We need them today more than we ever have. Absolutely. I jotted this down about today's culture. There's so much hate. There's so much evil. There's so much just things that are contrary to the Bible. So I wrote down today's culture, laugh out loud. <laughs> okay, we have the Father. We have Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit, we have the authority of the believer. They think there's about 30,000 promises in the God's Word. We have the gifts of the Spirit, and that's just a start. Versus, they have a defeated devil, they have deception, they have laziness, they're under the law of the spirit of sin and death. Think we can win? Mm-hmm. We've already won. Mm -hmm. And so, we're encouraging you to rise up in your authority, in the rights that Jesus has given you. You know, these work even for people that aren't born again, Len, because they're spiritual principles that have been set in motion from the foundation of the world. Um, like you can have what you say. I remember uh, one of the com comedic actors, um, in his biography, he's not born again, makes no bones of it. And he said that when he desired to go into acting and comedy, that he said as a young boy, someday, somebody's going to give me a million dollar check. Mm -hmm. And people laughed at him, and I think some of his own relatives laughed at him, but he kept saying it. He said it. And one day, Somebody handed him a million dollar check for work he had done. Yes, they did. Why did that work? Because of the spiritual principles that God has set in motion, their laws. And if you flow with them, decreeing and saying, you'll have what you say, good or bad. Mm -hmm. So if you say something long enough, it will come to you. Now, that's just like carte blanche. That's just, but I mean, think of what's going on today that's against God and against God's Word. We can defeat that. Absolutely. We can come out on top. We can win because He's already handed us the victory. We don't have to despair over the bad news. No. We don't have to give up.
We don't have to be discouraged because we win. We have all these tools in our arsenal from God himself. And darling, uh, the way God created the universe was through the spoken word. And uh, many of us believe uh, that there are, there are musical parts to that creation, that God not only spoke the universe into existence, but he sang it into existence, which is even more powerful. You know, if you look at a word, it's really a little mini song. It has a beginning, it has uh, frequencies throughout, and then it has an end. And that qualifies, I mean, it has a key, it has a tempo, uh, it, it has notes up and down the vocal scale, even though if it's, hey, see, that's a song. So God spoke and sang the, the universe into existence, and because the universe is created by words, it was created by words, it is voice activated. Kathy, the way God brought all this together is he planned that when we speak words, just like he did to create the universe, that the whole universe is created to bring the words we speak to pass. That's right. Now, if you get anything out of what we're saying on this broadcast today, please listen to what we're saying now. God's worked it all out in his master plan that the design for our words coming out of this cake hole here, as they say, hooked onto your human spirit. The design is that these words, all of, the, all of creation goes to make these words come to pass. Now, if they're positive and wonderful words, that's a great thing. But if they're words of death and they're toxic words and they're destructive words, you are not wanting them to come to pass, believe me. No. And many of us are living in today the words that we spoke yesterday. And you wonder where these toxic things that we're walking in today came from? Your own mouth. And it's, it's rough to face that about ourselves, but it's so important to realize that today you're walking in what you said yesterday. But it's like a giant ship. I was in the Navy. I was a corpsman in the Navy. And I have a friend that was on an aircraft carrier, and he said whenever we wanted to put our boat into the wind and have our, our pilots take their aircraft off, we had to get into the wind, obviously. He said if it was a 180-degree turn, which it usually was, it said they took five miles and quite a few minutes to turn wow, into the wind. Long? Now, it may take you a while to turn your rudder. James, the book of James says your mouth, your tongue is a, is a rudder, and it turns the whole ship of your life. So it took a while in the Navy for my friend's ship to turn into the wind, but when it did, it, just be assured that when you do change what you say, you have to change what you think in order to change what you say. Right. And when you say different things, different fruit comes out on the tree. It's a good thing. When you say toxic things, you're, you're going to be having to put your boots on and walk in uh, the goo that you said yesterday in your here and now present self and present life. Uh, many people talk about your best life, having your best life. Well, having your best life is... Uh, having words from the Word of God fill your heart and then fill your mouth. And when they fill your, your thoughts and your mouth forms words, uh, they fill up the atmosphere around you. That's right. And what it's like is, uh, Kathy and I were going down the interstate the other day, and this happens over our many, many years of traveling. Uh, quite often, you'll see them repaving, re-asphalting a highway. And the trucks will be in the back of the bin of the asphalt, the, the, the thing that lays the asphalt, and they'll be dumping that in and dumping that in and dumping that in. They'll pull one after another, one after another. And they'll then pull away and a new one comes. And out of the other end of that uh, asphalt laying machine comes this beautiful, smooth, flat, lovely ribbon of black highway and they're coming along spray painting it and striping it after just your tires don't even make any noise on it. It's so nice and smooth. Well, what you feed in that hopper 
of your eyes and your ears and the words that you hear yourself say because you believe your own words more than you believe anyone else's words, let's face it, because what you hear yourself say, it, it's, boy, it really gets down in there. What you hear said to you in music, what you see visually on television and, and movies and all that gets down into you and it changes what's on the inside of you. So if you want to change what's on the inside of you, start saying what God says. And then when you, when you do dump that material into the hopper uh, of your human spirit and your mind, what comes out? is going to be a wonderful highway that you can walk into your future on and your future can come rolling to you uh, up on. And uh, I hope you get the metaphor and the uh, picture that I'm trying to say. Words are very, very important. And to have your mind renewed by the Word of God is an absolute necessity. And when your mind gets renewed by the Word of God, your words come out full of life instead of full of darkness. That's right. You're not talking the dark side anymore. No. And You're the talking Holy, life. Yeah, the Holy Spirit then has words of life to bring into the natural realm that we yes. live in, into your life. Into your here and now. Yes. That's right. Yes. Go ahead with that. This is so interesting. Well, the Lord said that we could have the desires of our hearts. He said he would meet all our needs plus have the desires of our hearts. And so in Luke 18, he gave this tremendous, tremendous example of how insistent we should be on receiving the promises that he's given us. So in chapter 18, it says this. This is Jesus talking. And he spake a parable unto them, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So I'm going to hold there, Lynn, and let you tell about our offer. And we're going to come back after they tell people how to get it and see what happened when a widow lady kept imploring an unrighteous judge. Ooh, I can't wait to hear that. Well, we are so glad to have you as our partners here on TCT. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your financial investment in one of the greatest ministries on the face of the earth. Integrity, power, content, steadfastness. This is a great place to sow your seed to get exponential compounded results in a positive way to help other people. And to help you to uh, be blessed musically and be blessed spiritually as you listen to music, we're offering uh, as a special thank you gift for our TCT partners. When they far partner financially with us, these wonderful two CDs of mine, one is called Redemption and one is called How Great Thou Art. And did you know you just get online and check this out in music, uh, hymns, old hymns of the church are trending. They're getting popular again. And that's what these two CDs are. How Great Thou Art has, uh, there is a bomb in Gilead uh, in the garden. You know, he walks with me and talks to me. What a friend we have in Jesus. Blessed assurance. There's a fountain filled with blood. It goes on and on and on. And this beautiful full orchestra with Stradivarius violins with me singing with them. This is so gorgeous. It is just wonderful. Uh, there's a hymn medley on here of... I see a crimson stream. There is a fountain filled with blood. Jesus, thy blood and righteousness. And when I survey the wondrous cross and the doxology, praise God from whom all blessings flow. You've never heard it like this. Anyway, to say thank you when you become partners with TCT, we want to send these to you. And here's some information about how you can hook up with this wonderfully anointed collection of old hymns. Kathy, we have two wonderful CDs that are our love gifts to our partners, and they're How Great Thou Art yes. and Redemption. Talk about How Great Thou Art. How Great Thou Art is with a keyboard and lens vocal, and it has all the favorite hymns of the church. Are there 14 or 15? 15 of them 15 on that one, yes. 15 beautiful hymns. And Redemption is done with a full orchestra, a symphony orchestra, 
even with Stradivarius violins, wonderful hymns collections that you need in your library. So we're real thrilled for you to have those. The two hymn CDs will be a blessing. Enjoy these beautiful symphony classics. Call now at 866-338-5033 or contact us at P.O. Box 308, Heron, Illinois 62948. We're looking at Luke, the 18th chapter, where Jesus gave us an example of how insistent we're supposed to be on getting answers to our prayers. I love this, Lynn. This is I awesome. I absolutely love this. Uh, in the opening, and I have this uh, four translation Bible here, the parallel Bible that I love. Um, the King James says, um, he spoke a parable unto them that men ought always to pray and not to faint. The Amplified says, to the effect that we ought to pray always and not turn coward. Oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> not turn coward, faint, lose heart, and give up. You know, I think there are people that when they hear that, they realize the devil has discouraged them and they don't have to lose heart and give up, and they're gonna make that choice today, Lynn. You have a CD with one of, my, one of your great teachings along these lines, and it's, it is my, one of my favorite CDs that Kathy does in her teaching ministry, and it's called, Not To Me You Don't. That's the title of it. Yeah. Not To Me You Don't. You've gotta have that dogged <laughs> attitude, don't you? You do. That the dev devil's not going to run over you. That yes, life's you do. circumstances are not going to run over you and just have high carnival with you, that you stand up and say, nope, enough is enough is enough. That's right. And you use the word of God to say enough is enough because you have that amazing authority behind you with those divine frequencies coming out of that word when you do say enough is enough. Yeah, I don't care what it is, what area it's in. If I have a pain, I say not to me, you don't. What Jesus, about an empty checkbook? Not to me, you don't. <laughs> what about friends that talk ugly about you? Not to me, you don't. What about kids that are out smoking pot and acting weird? Not to me, you don't. If you're my kid, you're shaping up. Amen. Okay, so in the New Living, here's the way Je they interpreted Jesus saying it. One day, Jesus told <clears throat> his disciples a story to illustrate their need for constant prayer. But he's talking about believing prayer. And to show them that they must keep praying until the answer comes. Glory to God. Mm. So here he goes saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterwards he said within himself, though I fear not God, no, nor regard man, because this widow troubles me, she was driving him nuts. <laughs> I will avenge her, lest by her continually coming she weary me. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of God cometh, the Son of Man, shall he find faith on the earth. Boy, that's strong. It's no accident that that question, you know, you, you hear that a lot in messages. Um, will the Lord find faith on the earth? Well, what? I've really never heard that explained that great of what that means. But I understand it when I read this passage. I'd forgotten that it was right at the end of this passage. He's saying faith doesn't give up. Faith doesn't faint. Faith keeps going after it until it is given. Mm. Whether it's an unjust judge, 
Because it means whether it's some in the secular world, people don't, this doesn't just work in the church. This works out in the world. Especially in the world. I yes. remember a court case that um, we were helping a friend with, and it didn't look good. And I said to uh, a lady that had worked <clears throat> in a ministry uh, where there were lots of court cases and lots of, this woman had lots of faith. And she had seen miracle after miracle from uh, drug addicts to down and outer, outers to the homeless. She'd seen miracles when it looked impossible and courts even helping them. And so I said to her, you know, we have a court case today we're going to with a friend. And I'm really, I'm really got my faith on the victorious outcome, but the lawyer is awful. And he even is known to curse at the judges, which in the natural end, that's not too smart that's not a good when thing. you're trying to get a good <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> verdict out of him. And so she twirled around to me and she pointed at me and she said, that makes no difference. Mm. And you know, it hit me like a bullet of faith in the chest. And the minute she said it, I knew I'd let my faith sag there, worrying about what that lawyer was going to do. Mm -hmm. He's not more powerful than God. Nope. I'm not basing my faith or supposed to on what lawyer is good or, or makes a mistake or doesn't. And that just lifted me. And we went down to the courtroom. And on top of this wild lawyer, the judge looked like Dustin Hoffman. He had a ponytail. Yeah. Okay. He was about 80, but he really thought he was cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> he had a ponytail, and that little courtroom was just like his stage. Uh -huh. And he was ruling this and ruling that, and I just sat there in the back with my friend, and all of it, and it looked bad, it looked bad, the lawyer kicked up, it looked bad in the natural. All of a sudden, the, the judge goes, okay, you can have that. Mm. I laughed all the way home, <laughs> but I never forgot it, Len. Mm -hmm. See, we're not to base our, our, base our faith on natural things. This is what Jesus is saying here. Don't give up. Even if there's unsaved people involved that are meaner than snakes and say, we're never going to give this to you. Jesus said the widow got it because she kept bugging him. She wouldn't let go of her faith. Mm. I just love it mm. so much. So good. I'm looking at the Amplified here, Len, and it says, um, the judge in the second verse uh, was the kind of man that did not reference God. He did not fear God, and he did not respect God or even other men. Mm -hmm. But there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, protect and defend and give me justice against my adversary. And for a time he wouldn't. See, this is where we don't give up. Mm -hmm. But later he said to himself, <clears throat> though I have neither reverence for God or fear of God nor respect and consideration for men, Yet, because this widow continues to bother me. <laughs> Don't you love it? Persistent faith. Yeah. Persistent faith. She turned him around. Mm -hmm. I will defend and protect and avenge her, lest she give me intolerable annoyance <laughs> and wear me out by her continual coming, or say that at last, she comes and rails on me, and this says, or tries to strangle me oh. in the Amplified. <laughs> yeah. Oh, keep her outside the gate when she's talking or she's going to do that. He, yes. He was, he was really afraid. Yeah. And so the Lord says, <clears throat> he calls this faith, her continual coming and not giving up. And that's the kind of faith he's looking to find on the earth. Yes. Glory to God. Oh, that's Re so good. Read Mark eleven twenty four. 24. All right, Mark eleven twenty four, and we'll probably have to leave the program at that and talk about that on the next broadcast. But this is such a wonderful, wonderful uh, 
group of scriptures. You just don't want to miss a word of this. Mark 11, 20, just 24, Kathy? Yeah. All right. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, not just need, desire, when you pray, believe, not when you see it, when you pray, believe that ye have them and ye shall have them. Kathy, that, that just sounds too good to be true in the natural. But it's not. But it's not. Mark 11, 24. Let me read it again. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, or a better word is take them, and ye shall have them. Oh, that is so good. Now, Lynn, there are people watching today, I know it in my spirit, that they have desires in their heart, things they want to do for God, things they want to see happen in their family. And you can have those desires of your heart. You just determine to be like this widow woman that bugged the unrighteous judge. And you just say, Lord, this is my desire. I ask you for this. I ask you, Father, in Jesus' name, and I declare I have it now. And then from then on, just praise him for it. Just every day or when you think of it, say, I thank you that that's done. I thank you, Father. I give you glory. And you and I know that no matter what it looks like, it's done. We have inside information, all the words in red. And you hang on to that like a bulldog and watch the Lord move in your life and in your behalf. Nothing's impossible. Amen. Nothing's too hard for the Lord. So go after the desires of your heart. Hold up Mark 11:24 to him and never ever let go until you see it come to pass. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.